So in this video we're going to look at creating workflows or approvals. You get to the approvals menus by going into the divisions. So as it stands, workflows belong to divisions. So for example, if we go into the sales division, click the edit, scroll down to the bottom, we can see that we've already got some workflows here. So I'll talk you through creating a new one. What I would say is probably um, before you start, make sure you've got all your users set up and you've set things like your head of division and your head of your business unit. So to create a new workflow, let's click on new workflow here. Uh, we'll give it a name, we'll say up to £5,000 as a workflow and the process type is an approval. Um, so the first step we've got is what do we want to happen? We've only got a few steps actually, it's really simple. We've got email and approver. We've got send an email, uh, send the purchase order to the supplier, or there's another one called file director check-in. So file director is a uh, very sophisticated document management system that we integrate with seamlessly. And for those who want advanced document management and super sophisticated approval workflows, we can check the document into, work, uh, into file director, uh, do the workflow or approval there, and then have it come back into Zahara afterwards. So let's start off, we're not gonna do that though, we're gonna start off with a simple approval where the first step we wanna email an approver. So we click add step and say uh, e email Jeremy. Um, he's the first approver. So if I choose Jeremy from the list, uh, he's a registered user and we'll give a subject for the email we're sending him, please approve. PO request. Okay, so that, that's our first step. So what happens here is that when a purchase order request is made, uh, Jeremy will receive an email, um, he then approves or reject. If he rejects, it's game over, we can't go any further. If he approves, we will go on to the next step. So the next step actually, we wanna uh, send it to Martin. So if we go add new step, uh, Martin to approve. Martin is the next one on the list. Uh, please approve. PO. Okay, so let's just recap. So as, as it stands at the moment, we've got email approver, uh, email Jeremy. If he rejects, game over. The thing's rejected. If he approves, it will go on to Martin. So we've got now got two steps. We will now add the third step in, which is to uh, send the purchase orders to the supplier. So if we get to these two approvals, we want the supplier to uh, uh, receive the purchase order. So send to supplier. Uh, email address from so by by default it's always going to come from the um, the orders at myzahara.net if you've configured to send via your own SMTP server then you can put whatever email address in you want the email subject is purchase order attached and um, the other option I've got here is to CC the originator so if someone called Louise originates this order for example then when she, the purchase order is sent to the supplier she'll get a copy of it the only other step we can add in is send an email. So this is send generically send an email to anyone. So send email to accounts. From address uh, uh, orders at myzahara.net. Uh, new order raised. Okay, so we've got a four step process here. Email Jeremy, email Martin, send the purchase order to the supplier, and then send a generic email to the accounts department telling them to log in and check it. So if I now create that process, we drag down to the bottom. We've now got our different approval processes with one called PO approval, one's a file director approval, one's a director approval, but the one we've just created is called up to 5,000 pounds. So when you raise a purchase order now under the sales division, that purchase order should be available in a drop down list or depending on your settings, or it could be that we set it as the default approval. Um, so let's go and look at some of the settings that you can apply around approvals as well. So if you go into business and settings, first things first, you've got a whole bunch of templates that you can configure. So we have got the email that goes off to the supplier. We've got the purchase order template that you can manipulate. So we do have a WYSIWYG editor, but uh, for real control, get into the HTML and make it look exactly the way you want it. And what you'll find is that under um, insert, uh, you can will find the insert template. We've got all of the field values that you can drop into the uh, template or any of the emails are there ready for you. We've also got the approval email 
So we now have the email that goes to the approver having quite a bit of narrative about the email itself. So the supplier, the purchase order number, the date created, the amount and the internal comments field. We've also put in a green approve link and a red reject link. Um, so if somebody wants to approve that email or that purchase order while they're on the move without even looking any further, they've just seen the supplier, the, the date and the amount, they're, they're fine with that. They can approve it they can reject it or if they want to go back to the page and add some comments they can review with this link so that's our standard kind of email template for an approver that you can override at any time we've also got the purchase order rejection email here so if at any time the approver rejects the originator will get an email back from uh, Zahara telling him or her that it's been rejected uh, so that's your kind of template settings. If you go into workflow we've also got some other settings here. Uh, we've got uh, notify the originator of document workflow update. You can toggle this on or off. What this means is uh, that the originator can be sent emails at every step of the workflow process. So it's a simple one-line email saying that you know now gone to Barry for approval, now gone to Sarah for approval. Um, there's a couple of other settings here as well. The first one is allow orders to be requested on behalf of another user. Um, so that's to do with the purchase order kind of when you're raising a purchase order, you can decide whether or not they have to raise it as themselves or they can uh, raise it on behalf of somebody else. It could be a, a kind of like a PA role. The other toggle we've got here is to do with um, a purchase order that's in a workflow and it gets edited. Perhaps the accounts department go in there and uh, add some nominal codes or some tax codes or something. Uh, rerun document workflow on update would mean that once the uh, uh, work uh, the purchase order is uh, edited, then uh, we rerun the workflow and kick it off again. So you can switch that on or off. It, if you leave it off, then it continues on its workflow um, regardless of, of any edits that have been made on it. Okay, so that concludes setting up uh, a workflow. What we do now is uh, there's another video which we're going to do about kind of workflows in action. So have a look at that and see the outcome of the settings you make. Thanks for watching this one.